I think one of the problems that Americans face with coming to terms with what's happening to progressive liberalism is they don't expect liberals to be intolerant, closed-minded people. It's not only that's not their identity or their legacy or what they're known for, it's also because people uh, who see themselves this way, uh, whether it's in the entertainment industry or whatever, are not being fully honest with themselves or with us. For example, if you see someone like Jon Stewart on television, most people don't see somebody channeling liberal cliches. They just see a really funny guy. But he is channeling liberal cliches. He's just doing it in a very clever and entertaining way. And the dominance of this ideology in our popular culture is making it very difficult to know what's up and what's down and what's true and what's not. The fact of the matter is, is that Americans are not used to seeing liberals as authoritarian wolves in sheep's clothing. My name is Kim Holmes. I'm a distinguished fellow at the Heritage Foundation. I studied the history of Europe, the history of America, and also the history of ideas. Uh, and it's the, mainly the interest uh, that I have as an historian that first uh, brought me to uh, look at this topic of the, uh, of, the, of the decline of American liberalism and the rise of the postmodern left. I became alarmed by how progressive liberalism over the last decade have become something much more radical than I remember liberalism to be 10, 20, 30 years ago. And it changed starkly under President Obama. Uh, but I also know as an historian that there was a long history behind this, uh, that I grew up in the 1960s. I remember the New Left and the anti-Vietnam War movement. It felt a little bit like that, like the radicalism of the 60s, but it was different. It had a different edge to it. Uh, we now live in an era of multiculturalism and identity politics. Those things were just, just beginning back in the 1960s. But today they are full-blown, and they're actually the dominant feature of progressive liberalism. So this interested me first as an historian, but also uh, there was a lot of interest uh, among conservatives about what was happening to progressive liberalism. Why were they becoming so intolerant on our campuses? Why were they becoming so hostile to debate? Why was President Barack Obama so intent on not cooperating with conservative Republicans and using an executive authority uh, to, uh, to frankly get what he could not get to the Congress? I felt that there was a connection with what was happening in the political culture uh, and to liberalism that was also happening in the Obama administration. So I wanted to bring all of these pieces together, the history, the contemporary politics, and tell the story of why progressive liberalism was becoming nearly its opposite. It was becoming a movement of illiberalism. That is something that was hostile to freedom of speech and debate uh, and debate, and trying to close down uh, the open-mindedness and inquiry in which I remember classical liberalism, at least, was based on. The book is trying to tell us that what we call liberalism today is not liberalism at all. The main point of the book is that progressive liberalism has become dedicated to stifling debate, restricting f free speech, and using the government and shaming rituals in the public to coerce people into agreeing with them. The second point I would make is that this shift in American liberalism has accelerated under President Obama. Uh, his use of executive authority, uh, his demonization of his enemies, uh, his uh, tolerance of abuse, for example, in the IRS against political enemies, this has vastly accelerated this move towards illiberalism that I describe in the book. The third point is that the main battlefield against intolerance in this country has shifted. It is now a dominant liberal culture that is making war against a shrinking conservative one. My fourth point is, is that there is a new ruling class in this country that is defined by the new agenda of radical multiculturalism and identity politics. It is people that, who are the captains of industry, who run Hollywood, uh, who uh, increasingly are the cultural enablers of this country, uh, who believe in this new illiberal ideology, who many people think is just simply being open-minded and liberal, but as I show in my book, is anything but. It actually comes out of a long history of ideas, authoritarian ideas. If you trace them back far enough, actually at one time gave rise to the radical movements of both communism and fascism. Now, I'm not saying that the postmodern left is either communist or fascist, 
but they are the direct descendants of some of the authoritarian ideas that did give rise to those movements. You know, you can't solve a problem unless you truly understand it. And that's why I wrote this book. Conservatives need to understand what they're up against. This is a new kind of liberalism that they've never faced before. It's a liberalism that is really deceptive. It's not what it pretends to be. As for liberals, they're losing not only their traditions, they're losing their identity. They're supposed to be the ones that are in favor of the open mind, but they're not. They're supposed to be the ones that are in favor of tolerance, but they're becoming increasingly intolerant. If they want to save their own tradition and their own ideology and their own movement, they're going to have to come to terms with this. Look, I'm an American. I'm a conservative, but I'm also an American. And I believe that America needs a strong, viable, progressive, and liberal tradition. Uh, I believe that our constitutional and political order is really a kind of conservative, liberal system where we tolerate difference differences of opinion, different ideologies, but we keep the basic constitutional uh, infrastructure in place. We keep the rule of law, we keep the, the Constitution, the notion of checks and balances. These are things that liberals and conservatives should agree on. Uh, and then we can fight out what we want to do about Obamacare and taxes and the like within that structure. But that structure is under threat from the postmodern left. They're trying to rig the system where there is no more room for dissent. There's no more room for conservatives. They say they have the answers to all the questions under them. History has ended. I can tell you, any ideology that believes that history is over and history has ended is one step away from creating prisons for those who lose the argument. My book, The Closing of the Liberal Mind, is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and is available in local booksellers.